All right, I know it's a little dark, man. Still at the hotel. Uh, my power came back on, but we got the room for two nights. So I'm um, going to finish the video up here. But then Comcast went out. So they still ain't fixed that yet, neither. So, hey, uh, good thing we did get the room for two nights. But uh, let's talk a little bit about Pro Football Focus. They ranked the Lions D line 27th in the league. Only uh, teams behind them are the Jets, the Dolphins, the Seahawks. Um, and I believe the Panthers. So I think that's the Seahawks, the Jets, the Dolphins, the Panthers, um, and the Raiders, excuse me, are, um, the five teams that's behind the Lions. So let's talk about it. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And it just seemed to be a recurring theme where every year with Patricia now seemed like, a, a, like an annual, you know, topic. We talk about the lack of talent on the defensive line. And Pro Football Focus is saying that Trey Flowers don't have no help. That it's pretty much up to the core brothers to help him out to get a pass rush. And they also said that if Deshaun Hand can, you know, basically rekindle that flame that he got in his rookie year, then they may, you know, may have some help. So, um, and they also cited that a lot of the help that the Lions got are run stoppers like Nick Williams, Danny Shelton. Um, I think they even spotted John Penincy as um you know kind of you know help behind those guys as you know run stop and defensive tackles and that's kind of like what patricia like that's the patriot way they like those those run run stoppers them big space eaters guys on the defensive line they really ain't never been you know down with the agile you know you know uh javon Kerr, Simeon rice type of guy off the edge they've been more the richard seymour's now they did have chandler jones but they got rid of him but that's kind of what that system is about. It's not about, you know, the athletic, you know, fast edge guy. Even though Bill Belichick had that guy, Lawrence Taylor, and he was the only athlete really across that line, across that, you know, Giants, you know, front seven. Everybody else was big plotter and space eater. But, you know, that you know Patricia got to understand, and Bill Belichick will understand that the game is changing. Last year they had all them slow people in the front seven for the Patriots. And, you know, every mobile quarterback ate them up. You got to have your your scheme has to be able to evolve basically to where, you know, the National Football League is going. And now you got to have speed in your front seven. You can't have those slow, strong defenses no more. It was shown to be eaten up by every, you know, mobile quarterback last year that New England played. Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Deshaun Watson. Um, you keep going on and on. They got ate up by everybody. Ryan Tannehill. And now you got more and more mobile quarterbacks in this league. You know, just look, you know, Rodgers, Russell, Kyler, that, Wentz. I mean, that's just the NFC that I'm thinking of. Then Lamar, Tannehill, my homeboy. I mean, you can just keep going on. Josh Allen. The majority of the league now are quarterbacks that can get out there and extend the play. Baker can extend it a little bit as well, too. So, and Burroughs is kind of athletic as well, too. So, more and more times into the league, you get more of these athletic quarterbacks coming. And when you slow across the front seven, they just going to burn you. But that's what the Bill Belichick tree, the Patricia, the Parcel tree like. They like those big, slow space eaters up front, them thick, slow linebackers. And when you spread them out, you put them in space, you can expose them no matter how athletic the back ends are for the Patriots and for the Lions. It don't matter. They got to get more athletic up front. But Patricia just don't like speed guys. Like he told my mans at the Senior Bowl, I like I like guys. Nobody rushes with speed. Everybody rushes with power, which is a lie. There's been plenty of dudes that come off the edge with speed. I don't care which all they people tried to cover up for him. Well, I know what he meant. No, he he said what he said. He said nobody rushes with finesse. Then what was the white for any spin move? What was Simeon Rice and, and, and Javon Kirsch doing off the edge? You know what I'm saying? You got to have. Speed guys in this league now, you just can't have all them old Richard Seymour's and Vince Wilfords, them slow dudes. But that's what Patricia like. He like dudes that can stop the run. He like those slow, unathletic, strong guys. And for all the power that this Lions defense is supposed to have last year, they show got ran on a lot. Laterally, north and south, east and west, whatever way you can run, ninety degree angle, they ran wild on them. What was the strength at? That defense wasn't looking so strong. And when you don't dominate, you know, the power aspect of the front seven and you don't have no speed, you're going to end up with the defense they had last year. And that's on my mama. So my whole thing about the defensive line, like I said before, when you get up that high in the draft, either you taking the pass rushing savant, a quarterback 
or somebody that can protect the quarterback. It's simple as that. Those are the three things you're taking. Left tackle, quarterback, or pass rusher, savant, or a special running back. Barry, Zeke, Emmitt, guys like that. Walter, Gale, guys like that, all right? The Lions went up there and took a corner. When they need, when they had needs off the edge, they had needs protecting the blind side quarterback. I don't care what y'all think about Taylor Decker. He garbage. I don't care what nobody say. And you needed a need at the quarterback position. And then we also talk about mobile quarterbacks. Look at the two quarterbacks that could be coming in next year, Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields. That's going to add two more mobile quarterbacks in the league. But I, obviously, I don't have much faith in this defensive line. You know, because if you predicate the success on Deshaun Hand, well, I mean, he ain't really been healthy ever. Even in college, he had injury issues, excuse me, if my memory serves me correctly. So he he the MVP right now. He the most valuable player coming into this season. If he go and he be successful and he able to, you know, penetrate and get up the field and make things happen, Trey Flowers will have a good season. And then you're going to have guys like that step in, Julian, Romeo, Cora, you know, you're going to have those type of guys step in and have really, really good seasons. And if they doing the job and Sheldon doing this job and Nick Williams and John Panisi doing their job, stopping the run, then they're going to be able to keep the linebackers clean and survive whoever it is, Raglan. We just did the video earlier, Collins, Christian Jones. So it all works hand in hand. Yo, space eaters up front, your big fellas up front, protect the linebackers. The linebackers do their job and the front four do their job. The cornerbacks and safeties and DBs can all do their job easier. So um, to be honest, I can't knock it. It's really, this line is still predicated on one guy. It's the shine hand. If the shine hand ain't healthy or it was a blip and instead of a trend year one, the defensive line going to struggle. If he come in healthy and he beats him like he did year one, the line going to line gonna flourish. It's still predicated on one guy. No matter if he was injured last year, no matter what Patricia, you know, what Patricia did as far as, you know, breaking down and reviewing the tape, he still don't put no stock into stars in the front four. He making the same mistake year one to year two and year two to year three. They had to go out there and get somebody that can do what Deshaun Hand can do. That It was imperative. Even if they moved down and took Javon, was it Kinlaw, I would have understood them taking Kinlaw. The game is not played from the back end to the front. I don't give a fuck what Bill Belichick doing. It ain't working right now. And Patricia trying to do that. He trying to build it through the DBs. He built it last year with James, with, uh, with Collins, and then before all that, uh, Walker, Will Harris, and all that other shit, man. The game is built from the trenches on out. That's the line, offensive line, D line to the linebackers to DBs, then line to quarterback to running backs to receivers, man. And they and they still they got they coming in with the same issue they came in with last year and the year before when they got Ricky Von John Francois, and then last year they replaced with Mike Daniels. He's a fucking idiot, bro. Him and Bob Quinn are truly idiots, dude. They are idiots. If Deshaun Hand ain't good this year, the line gonna struggle. It's as simple as that. Y'all can talk about how good Danny Shelton is. He a two-down player. He's a run stopper. Nick Williams had six sacks. That was an anomaly last year. He's a run stopper. John Panisi, we don't know. He dominated, you know, physically lower level opposition. We gotta see where he at then he got where he at. But the one dudes that's going to save the bacon, that's going to make the whole engine go is the help of Flowers and the help of Deshaun Hand. If they out there and they consistent, then it's going to make for the Coral Brothers easier. It's going to make for Danny Shelton's job easier. It's going to make everybody's job easier, even to the linebacker. So once again, here they go, putting their eggs in one pot. Real talk, I'd have been fired, Matt Patricia. Real, he's an idiot, bro. He come in with the same holes as last year. No cap. And I guarantee you, even when you bring in Corey Udall in here, he said we might do some things that they did in Philly. In Philly, they brought pressure, and they, they disguised. They played band. They played zone. We've seen that defense here because Jim Source was the coach here, the defensive coordinator here. But when you talk about this defensive this defensive front with this defensive scheme, do y'all really think, you know, Matt Patricia going to change his stripes? Keep it 100. Do y'all think Matt Patricia going to change his stripes? I hope so. That's the biggest part. That's bigger than Deshaun Hand staying healthy and Trey Flowers staying healthy. The biggest part is he going to be able to assist his lack of personnel in the front seven with his scheme. See, scheme can cover up a lot of things. You know, disguise, sending blisses. You don't know who coming, who going. You know what I'm saying? Scheme can do a lot of things. His scheme is just bland. 
it don't get no blander than, than Matt Patricia's scheme. It's rush three or four, play man with a robber or, or two deep, whatever the hell he's doing. And you you got to be out there, 10 Mississippi covering a fucking tight end or receiver that run a 4-3. Like I said before, I appreciated guys like Jim Johnson who, who dialed up the heat, aggressive defensive coordinators. I, I like them dudes. Matt Patricia, he got all that yelling, telling other players, stop sucking this and that in the third. But he get out there, he a care bear. He's sweet. He's sweet. He ain't even tanky. He ain't even sweet and tangy with a kick. He just sweet. He called defense. He called defense safe. Passive. You know what I'm saying? It'd be like third and one. This motherfucker drop everybody in coverage except for like two or three rushers. You'd be like, man, what? You know, but they coming in with the same issue. I agree with pro football focus. This defense is predicated on Trey Flowers and the MVP up front, and the whole defense is the shine hand. If hand go down, the defense go down. It's simple as that. They didn't try to get a backup. They ain't try to, you know, trade back in the first round to find another dude to come and do the job. They didn't do it. They didn't do it. You know what I'm saying? They should have found somebody that's in the interior that can match his fly. You know what I'm saying? That can do what he do. Twitchy, get upfield, penetrate. They should have found that guy, and they, they, just, they just didn't. I just didn't understand it. Even in free agency, with some guys out there they could have paid to come in here and help him on the interior. If Danny Sheldon go down, no matter how durable he been, it's, it's you know, you count on a part-time player, Nick Williams, who bounced around damn near every team to come in and be a run stopper. Matt Patricia just believe his system in the front four that make it work. And obviously year one, year two of proving they wasn't a system, you got to have horses. You got to have talent. When you only want to rush three or four, you got to rush talent, but I agree with pro football focus on this one. But a lot of people going to talk up Danny Shell. They're going to talk these dudes up. And then when reality kick in, they're going to be trying to talk about his Patricia fault. But, hey, it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget we on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Check out our Detroit Lions Talk playlist. You can head over to Pro Football Focus. They got all 32 rankings. Um, I believe Eagles was number two. I can't remember exactly who was number one, but I know the Eagles is up there. 49ers was in the top five, so... Um, it was some good defensive lines in the league. Man, I was surprised Seattle was dead last. But once again, no Michael Bennett, no Cliff Averill. You know, it's a lot of dudes that have moved on. So, And Seattle been a cheap franchise of late. And I heard there might be some rumors that they could be trying to, uh, at some point, they tired of playing Russell Wilson. He could end up in Chicago. And I hope that don't happen. We ain't going to never win a division if he end up with Chicago. But let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Appreciate everybody for checking in. Keep sharing the videos. Want to make a donation to the channel. Cash at PayPal, but share the video. Let me know if you was out of power. Um, I know 144,000 Michiganders was. I know it's going to be harder for them to get power um, out there by, uh, like, was it, Westland? I mean, excuse me, Ypsilanti, um, Belleville. So, um, hopefully you guys get power. Hopefully you guys safe. Appreciate that love, support, man. Keep sharing the videos. Don't forget to check on the channel while Goodfellow Sports TV we gone.